Alright, we got ourselves a Kurt. Whatever or nothing. 20,000 pound hitch going on here. Put the bumper on. Is that the same place the bumper was sitting before? Yeah, it's just not bent now. Because <laughs> it was bent out of whack because they backed it into things. Oh, uh, yeah. You can still raise that technically. Almost. Almost. If we notch it a little bit, you can. I wonder if I should just go get like a two and a half receiver or use the sleeve. I would use, I would, it's up to you. Because I already have one. So, but yeah, you could take the sleeve if you wanted to and stick so, it in so, there. So you welded this to these. Nope. No? The bumper brackets are still separate. Oh, okay. So this hitch is good for all of the 20,000 pounds it's rated for. It is welded straight to the frame. Nice. So. Well, you know, there there is no direct, well, this actually is the bolt-on that goes to this truck, right? Except we had to weld it on. This is a weld-on. These trucks only had weld-on hitches. Oh, okay. Because they're straight frame trucks, they're not This the particular same. one, there's your, does it have the model number on it? I can't tell if it does. Uh, no, it doesn't. It's on I'll the box. see if I can find that. The box is over there. There's a the box. So People, this is the biggest hitch money can buy. This is the biggest hitch. Uh, I don't see. I'm trying to find it. Oh, here we go. Here. No, that's got the address of the place. We ordered it. Well, I'll put it into the description. It's got to be here somewhere. I'll put it into the description. Anyway. So we wanted to get a hitch onto the rig, and I wanted it to, we were, what we were gonna do, build it from scratch. And over here in this box, I had gone and bought my And I was gonna just go get some three inch box, weld it together. But we, and by we, I mean, uh, decided that the best thing to do would be to do what we did. And by we, I mean him. <laughs> and by we, I mean I paid for it. So, you know, this truck being a 2010 International 4300 by Navistar, the Durastar, has a gross vehicle weight of about 20,000 pounds has about a 5,000 pound carrying capacity inside the vehicle with a 66,000 pound towing capacity. So whatever I'm gonna pull behind this thing is not gonna care. Other cool thing about this, as I demonstrated in earlier video, is that uh, you can raise and lower this thing. So do you think that the airbags on here, what are the airbags rated at? Because we're gonna be adding tongue weight to this. But you're not adding enough much tongue weight. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Wait, it I says mean, it, it holds five thousand pounds inside the vehicle. Yes. It's only it's this hitch is <laughs> this hitch is rated for a two thousand pound tongue weight, which is the max tongue weight. That means I have a five thousand pound tongue weight. <laughs> so that means you'd have to. So you if you had another three thousand pounds in the truck besides the tongue weight on the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. So you 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 won't max it out. So like I could have a trailer on here and a bunch of really fat chicks. Yeah. So I don't think you could fit enough in there. Oh, you don't know me. <laughs> you, you haven't seen you haven't seen me on a Saturday night. All right, so there's all kinds of things happening on this truck. I mean, it is um, it's a mess. But uh, this is going to be nice and clean when we get the the trim back on here. Before I bought it, they, they had somebody had backed in here and put a little damage here. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to fill this in with aluminum like this. And I decided to change out the three bezels for the single three bezel piece, right? You can get this little plastic deal. And this would be this would fit on any rig. These are Whalen 600s, I believe they're called. Is that a six to you? That looks, that's a 600. So we're gonna instead put this bezel here. These are about a hundred bucks or whatever they were. I just think it's gonna be a cleaner look and we needed to change these gaskets. And by the time I priced out fixing that one and I was like, you know what? I'll just change out these bezels. It'll be pretty. Here, I'll stick that in there. Doesn't get jacked up. And then, um, so we're gonna make that pretty. Uh, for the, we're building a matching trailer that's gonna match the rig. So I've ordered more of these Whalen 900s 
uh, these are the strobes. I mean, I'm just pointing at them, but you got the scene lights and then you got the strobes. So I've got a pace trailer that we're gonna do a piece on soon. And that trailer will be the color match with the same reflective white stripe in the same height. And then we're gonna put the same matching lights. Um, we just got this from Harbor Freight, the Vulcan 220. What do you think, you recommend? Good, good welder? It works decent. I, I mean, just... for a thousand bucks. No, it, it works pretty good. <laughs> Harbor Freight I, is not a sponsor. They're not a sponsor. You can say whatever you want. I just have, I just have to learn how to use it because I'm used to using my old school mill. Well, it's got the easy, like when you turn it on, it's got instructions. I mean, it sets itself up. You just tell it the gauge of material. It was welding too hot. I actually had to turn it down and turn the speed really? down when I set it for, when I set it for this because I was welding quarter inch. And are you, are you, long. did you change the uh, wire? Yeah. Are you running gas? Running gas, running okay. wire, took okay. it all in. It took me a little while to tell okay. I got a good weld out of it, but now that I've got, right. so I don't like the gun. Down. Everybody says the gun sucks, the and by the way, piece. well, uh, the gun's garbage. You got to change that tip with that other tip, maybe. I already did. I mean, I already that, I'm that, using the correct stuff. No, but the the shield tip. That's Every, for the flux core. I guess. That's Everybody says these tips suck and the gun sucks, so we may order a better one. That's all I would recommend. A better gun, and I think it'd be a good welder. You always need a better gun. Okay. So, whoops. on the last video, we um, we showed this step, uh, automatic step with lights. Got the locks working. So one of the cool things about this particular rig is you have a central locking system, and we'll show that in here in just a second. Got this little light here. Um, Let's show off what we had done on the inside, because all this is all brand new. So, now, um, so let me grab the keys. All right, so put in a remote system that locks and unlocks every single lock. So like you can have this open. Now it's locked. That is what makes these bigger coaches cool. Now, we don't have the rest of this in here because we're still working on it, but let me turn the power on. This radio here is super cool because it's actually a single DIN unit, meaning it only takes up this one, but the screen covers both. So this control panel, we moved down so that we could fit a double den. Now, behind this screen is actually a space where you could easily put a double den, but it's too far away. And sorry for all the noise, but that's the noise it makes. This four camera system I talked about before, now we have it hooked up. We don't have the other cameras hooked up, but now I can have uh, my rear view. This is my overhead view. We're gonna add another camera down below that will be see just the ball of the hitch. We're gonna have another view of my blind spot over there and then we're going to add a fourth one that's going to run all the way through the trailer and come out the back of the trailer so i'll be able to see the back of that really happy with this this is an apple carplay unit i'll put a direct link to this sony unit if you want to get one off of amazon or something um i have to be able to plug my phone in to be able to show off really what it does but has sirius xm uh, which is an add-on adapter, it costs another 50 bucks. But uh, a tremendous value, this particular radio, because especially for a truck like this, because you have the single DIN uh, style. So if you've got a situation where you've got a single DIN radio, but you have space below it, it was really easy to adapt this. And it looks factory. And it's a uh, Apple CarPlay unit with Sirius XM. Um, I can easily reach this over here. What's great about this system is that I can just hit camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. Right now we only have the one camera hooked up. Also I wanna mention if you have one of these internationals, this switch fails constantly. Why? It's right by the window. It gets wet and gets corroded. My mirrors were not working, but now I replaced that switch and, and oh, wrong, wrong mirror. Okay, that one. now they work just fine. Um, I put this little, little uh, temperature gauge there just so I could see. But anyway, these switches fail a lot simply because it's by the window, it gets wet and plan on replacing it. So if you buy one of these trucks and your mirrors don't work, replace the switch, take my word for it. Uh, we also replaced the steering wheel 
on one of the previous videos because when I bought this truck, it came with a bunch of extra parts. So brand new steering wheel. Uh, the truck's not for sale. I'm not trying to sell the truck. I'm just showing you what we did. Um, down in here is a brake controller. This brake controller we added has to be mounted vertically and I don't think the controls, well, here's a picture of what it is and I'll put a link to this if you're interested as well. So this brake controller has a separate screen and um, manual control for it. I don't know if it's laying down here or if he hasn't plugged it in yet. I don't know where it is. He's still working on it. But uh, when we put this panel back, there'll be a little thumb controller here where I'll be able to control my trailer brakes. And then there'll be the little screen we're going to mount like right here. So I'll have a cool, it'll be like Knight Rider. I'll have all these cool screens in here where I'll be able to uh, get to everything. Let's see. I think, oh, here's, here's the pieces to that controller. So this right here is going to be my brake control for the trailer. And then this little screen will display uh, the things I need to know about, uh, about that. So uh, this is what the cameras look like. This particular, one of these cameras, we're going to mount, we're going to mount this mirror or this uh, camera off the mirror over there. Because as you can see from my driver's point of view, right? I can't really truly see, so I can zoom in. Like I've got that bubble mirror, but it's kind of hard to tell. There's been a couple times I've been driving this big behemoth and if you're in some little ass car, I can't see. Also, I can't really see the curb. Normally on a big truck, there'd be a window down there, right? On a professional truck, there's a window. And then sometimes you get what's called a down mirror, a mirror that is, sits right here and you can see straight down. Like when I'm driving my Prevo bus, I can look straight down and see the curb and I can see my wheel because on a bus, your wheels are behind you. And so when you're parking, if you wanna get like that close to the curb, you can. So by using this camera we're gonna put in there, I'll be able to pull that camera up and I'll be able to see the side. And, and I don't wanna to get too close where I'm gonna damage my pop-out step or anything like that. So um, anyway, just showing off some of the stuff that we're doing on the rig. This thing is going to be so sweet, but I did want to talk about the hitch because it comes up a lot on these forums. So yeah, got, I'm all dyed up. Got, it. got my got my mustache on point. Look good. So you know, we're both members of uh, several different van life forums and ambulance forums. And adding the hitch to these things is always sort of a challenge simply because um, they place the box on top of the frame and it usually extends past the frame of the truck a good four or five feet. So in this situation, you have to figure out where you're going to put the hitch. It also kind of matters where, what you're going to be pulling. I'm going to be pulling a 24-foot pace trailer, probably weighs less than 4,000 pounds. I'll be pulling less than 10,000 pounds. So I'll be less than half of the rating of this thing. The truck itself has a 66,000 pound towing capacity, truck weighing, you know, 15,000 pounds. So it's gonna have no problem. And quite frankly, the aluminum structures of these things, I know this isn't recommended because, well, one thing you're talking about steel versus aluminum. Most people don't like to do any weld-ons, they like to do bolt-throughs, but if you wanted to bolt a hitch to one of these, you'd probably have no problem. Let's go take a look at another one of my ambulances that I have. Yes, I have more than one. And we'll look at the hitch that's on that one. All right, this one is a 99 uh, Ford E350, which is still in my possession, but I've sold it. And I'm holding it for the dude. Now, uh, this is a, you know, factory built hitch. <clears throat> and I don't see the manufacturing here on it. It says V5 Northern Stamping. I guess that's who made it. Um, and you can see it's a, it's a uh, 12,000 pound, it says, I believe, or whatever. I don't know if it has the rating on it. But um, we'll take a look on how this one's attached. And this is probably not factory. Or, you know, probably wasn't on it when it was an ambulance. But maybe. Uh, I don't know. They've, because usually you don't need to tow anything with an ambulance. So, but here's, here's the rig and not much to it either. Not much to it at all. So, um, I can't, I, I think this is bolted on to the factory, the frame of the Ford van. So probably a whole lot easier, sorry about my finger there, to get this one on here. So if you're dealing with a smaller type three uh, cutaway, which is what this is, <clears throat> with a factory Ford, it's probably a little easier to do. 
Uh, the guy bought this ambulance is in Alaska. And he says when the ground thaws, he's gonna drive it back. <laughs> um, and it's a great little rig. I've been using it to go to like, I went to Costco in it the other day in, in Home Depot. Uh, changing the subject a little bit, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you another project we're doing on the other truck. On most of these, this little tray here, or this little door, will hold the battery tray and, and hold the, <laughs> it's heavy, I don't wanna move it. Anyway, you got a tray of batteries, so there's two batteries. You know, most diesel trucks require two batteries. There's two batteries here, but there's actually a third up front uh, on this truck right in here. But I want to show you what we're doing to the other truck, which, by the way, is called a Type 1, where the box, excuse me, the box is separate from the truck. I can't pass through like I can with that one. But this is a much bigger truck. All right, we'll talk about the next project. All right, this truck has a, I guess, what is that? A 50 gallon tank, saddle tank on the passenger side, which 50 gallons sounds like a lot, but not when you're getting like eight or 10 miles a gallon. So what I wanna do is add an additional saddle tank over here on this side. The problem is this is where they keep the batteries on this rig. They've got the three batteries here. Now normally a box truck using this uh, rig would probably put the batteries on a tray back here uh, under where the box would go. So we're gonna remove all of this and change it out, but we need to relocate the batteries. So this is what our plan was. It was actually an empty box right here, just like most ambulances have this little box. And we had to do some modifications. We had to remove the, the little piston that holds this and, and had to cut this up. But I ordered this from uh, a RV and trailer supply. Now I put this black and white tape and all the stuff on there because it's gonna remind me where, what side the positive's on. It's just a little thing I did. But basically this was a couple hundred bucks and this is a battery tray made to hold three of the large group batteries. I think group 31 or 34, I'll have to remember which ones they are. But I'll be able to put three of those there. We're gonna relocate the battery cable from over on that side. We're gonna run it over here with like pretty big cable, about as big as your thumb. And so that you'll be able to access those three batteries right here. And then I'll be able to add that other fuel tank over there. The fuel tank's probably gonna cost somewhere between 600 to 1,000 bucks. And then we're gonna have to do some modifications. We're gonna have to figure out how their two tanks are gonna connect and communicate with each other fluid wise. Um, but that would allow me to hold 100 gallons of fuel, which would give me better range and the ability to buy more fuel when it's cheap. Because that's really one of the tricks. It's not just about the range, because you're gonna stop every couple hours to pee. The point is, is that you wanna be able to get gas, especially when you're traveling like I'm gonna be doing from east to west. When you get Texas and, or get gas in Texas, it's way cheaper than when you get it in like California. So you wanna be able to fill up before you get there or wherever you're going. Speaking of batteries, this is our electrical cabinet. So what we're gonna be doing in the next future video is we're gonna be putting a 3000 watt inverter here, a 20 amp charger here. The charger is gonna, this short power plugs in routes to here, which normally went to a vanner uh, it was a charger and inverter, but that's gone now. So we're gonna send this power to my 20 amp charger. This cable is coming from those batteries over there. And we're, we're probably gonna come off of this with a uh, isolated, regulated power trickle that's gonna go to some batteries here. I'm gonna put three more of those big batteries here that will kind of buffer zone that inverter so that Yes, it'll be getting power from the truck and it'll be charging from the shore. And, uh, but that way you were, you're not just pulling amps off of the alternator and kicking its ass every time you fire up something. But most of the things I'm gonna have in here are gonna be low power items. We're gonna have a little refrigerator, a little microwave, but I may end up adding a mini split. And if we do put the mini split in, the plan was to put that in here where we would put the outside unit somewhere in here. We would cut a fresh air hole down on the bottom for it to suck air out. Then we would put louvered vents here to blow the hot air out. And that unit would sit right here. And then we could have a shelf where we could have other storage because in here is gonna be part of our water system. We're gonna have a hot water uh, heater right here going into where the sink is on the reverse side of this and some other things. So um, there's a lot going on. If you're really into the van life, 
you just can probably subscribe and follow this series so you can see all the things we're doing to this truck and others. And um, this thing's coming along. It should be done. When, when's it going to be done, Mike? Tomorrow? When's it going to be done? <laughs> Quit adding things onto the list and we might actually get something accomplished. Yeah. Been trying to make it just so we could pull a trailer with it to begin with. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it has to have... Now, your dad mentioned we should put the stripper pole right here. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we'll put that right there. Oh my god. Yeah. That sounds like something you said. Yeah. A lot of projects happening here at the shop. You know, if this is your first time watching, you probably, you know, you don't know that we, we do things like this. It's the Back to the Future DeLorean Time Machine. My shop has built over 43 of those. I have a shop in Dallas, Texas, and I have a shop here in Las Vegas, which is where I am now. That's the Scarface car from Scarface. <laughs> My old Rolls Royce, and uh, so we're getting this shop together, and we're working on all kinds of projects. Just ordered this mini split that's going to go in this other workshop room. That's my old Rolls Royce that Jr. from Dallas used to drive. I bought that at South Fork Ranch. Um, of course, you know I got the big Icon box. I recently just got the smaller one. We haven't put anything in it yet, but the difference between like the Icon stuff versus the regular U.S. General, it's not even a question. I mean, this box which is facing the other way, but it's like 600 bucks and this one's like 1200 bucks. So literally double the price, but the quality is there. You can stand in these drawers. I highly recommend the Icon stuff. For the money, I mean, this thing was what, 2,500 bucks? And um, you know, it's, I mean, for what it does, it's, it's sick. Anyway, so this room in here is gonna be kind of a clean room was the idea. The idea with this room was gonna be, it was a place where we could pull a car in like a DeLorean and do wiring. So I want this to be an isolated, clean, air-conditioned room. We're gonna paint the walls red, of course. So they're gonna be red with a black middle and then gray. We're gonna grind down these floors and epoxy them. And we're trying to make our own doors. I don't know if this is gonna work. The idea was to have two four by whatever, seven doors or whatever. We're gonna cut the hole into this garage. We're gonna have two barn doors so that we could pull a car in here. And then that mini split's gonna go right there. And uh, that was the idea. <laughs> We're working on it, you know. This is the fridge I'm gonna put in there. Uh, that's my mattress that's gonna go in there. This door I bought, this is like a closet door, it's a 24 inch door. And that was the door I was gonna use for the bathroom in the ambulance. So these are all things that we're working on. Um, shop is like a total mess. These are some of the stuff we're gonna put in here. Like this is the charger that I wanna use. 20 amp three lead marine style charger that can be left outside and it's fine this is a 3000 watt duracell inverter that we're going to put in there we're going to have an isolator on it now i'm going to go get these batteries maybe tomorrow and um it's going to be great bet you can't wait yeah i keep moving this 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 here that's that's an impact. I know, but you have no 3 ace impact sockets down here. Yeah, so. but that's the impact drawer. Well, it doesn't fit up there. <laughs> I use it. You don't understand my thinking process. But, but you're not the one who's using it usually. Yeah, but there's no room in here for it. See, it's, I don't want, it's crowded. That's an impact. That's a wrench. It's not the same this thing. This is crap. That's that fine thing for little sucks. stuff. It's for little stuff. It's that. That's for just tightening up stuff and loosening it. And that's for ripping shit to death. When you want to like rip the threads out of something, you, where'd it go? You use this, this fucking thing, this, this thing. That is, that's how you just rip, you know. Now this thing will just tear your whole arm right off. So. I love how, the, I love how there's a charger drawer. It's, this is a great system. The little saddles here for the you got little holsters for your drills which are all not in there because they're sitting everywhere and not put away see they're not put away well that's my fault i left that out there Shit. yeah he's right i just keep adding on more and more stuff like i bought this spotlight and i wanted to put it up on the top of the roof and then it has a remote and then that way, be, he's like, what do you need that for? And I'm like, well, because sometimes you want to, you know, spotlight something. Yeah. So you got, because it's obviously the hitch I could not bring out even with the back of the box. 
So it's yeah. recessed some. So then that'll give you enough space for the pin, the chains, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So like the whole the whole thing will be cut out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just like that. So that's all you'll see. Fine. Well, looks, you know, there's going to be a. I'm not going to take the receiver off. I'll just leave it on there. It'll be too much trouble to get to it. So I'll just. I mean, I over welded and over braced this thing. So. How much wire do we go through? Let's see, that's the real test. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, not that much. So, I mean, I could do, I could do probably fifty of these before that spool run out. What would we do with that Harbor Freight? We'd have to. We'd have tools that were reliable. Oh, it, it worked. <laughs> the, the fucking hitch is on there. It worked. Twenty nine dollars a roll for that wire. You ever use the Chicago electric welders? Those things were. I've got a little one ten one. Those but, things I got you know, but that's for like fixing a fence or something, like one of these poles over there. Yeah. You put a hitch on there. That's a, that's a 220. You know, that's a high voltage, full blown welder. I mean, the, where it fails is like duty cycle. If you were trying to run a shop on that, no. Yeah. But when's the next time we're gonna use this welder? Like next. One of the options I do. Year? One of the options I do like is the adjustable post flow. Yeah where my welder is. Well, that thing, you can put a spool feed on it. You can TIG, MIG. It's got the foot pedal. I mean, it, it does everything. Yep. It does everything just a little bit. Kind of like you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> this is my uh, ex one of my extra spare buildings we're working on. And <laughs> there's just stuff everywhere. Slimer. Having a conversation over there with uh, Hannibal, you know. Uh, I have a lot of weird shit. Um, so this room we're working on. Nice, he's got the thing. So we just did this today. Painted it red. Of course we painted it red. This isn't the red I wanted to use, but it was free. Uh, because I already had a couple gallons of it. I wanted to use a brighter color. But this is going to be our jam room. I have a band. And this is just gonna be our rehearsal room. So I thought, I'm gonna give it a vibe. We'll paint it red, it'll be cool. I'm gonna put a ceiling fan up here and a big carpet and I'm gonna have all my amps and speakers and the mixers and the drum set over there. And it's gonna be a little rehearsal space where I can jam. And then once everything's put together, you know, I'll put my pinball machines up. There's gonna be a kitchenette over there, a couch, jukebox. Like it's gonna be a hangout, it's gonna be cool. And there's just like stuff I have just, you know, this is from the Van Gore. I used to do videos for the Van Gore. Some, uh, some Gore costume stuff. Uh, some Danzig stuff over here. A lot of Pantera stuff. I used to work for Vinnie Paul from Pantera at a band called uh, Hell Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's Vinnie's old golf clubs. For those of you that are fans, that was his golf clubs. The Big Bertha. Yeah, he was a good friend. I miss him a lot. Anyway. So, we... Little video poker machine. It is Vegas, right? There's Freddy coming out of something over there. So, anyway. These are things that are happening in the world of video Bob. It's always something fun happening in my life. I guess that's why people like to tune in and watch what I'm doing. One minute I'm working on the Scooby-Doo van or Knight Rider or Ghostbusters or an ambulance or cop car or who knows uh but hey this is what life life is all about you gotta have fun you gotta do fun stuff let's go check out the house well this is the same color red we used for this room this is my office it's very red well i used well i used it in my office i used it in the hallway too looks <laughs> yeah hi what you doing Nothing. Me either. Okay, guys. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I just want to do a little video update. If this is your first time watching, if you just tuned in specifically for the ambulance hitch, sorry I bored you with all this other stuff. If you're a Video Bob subscriber, thank you for watching. And uh, if you're trying to do the van life thing and you want to build stuff like this, uh, stay tuned to this series. Tune in once in a while. Maybe subscribe if that's what you're into uh, because we're going to be doing a lot more with this ambulance and with the... Uh, trailer that's going to match it when it's going to be a really cool camper rig unlike any other that I've ever seen. 
you know, I always see people putting out videos that say van life on a budget. I'm trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to do the baller van life. I don't want to do the budget one. I want to do the badass one. If that's what you're into, tune in. See you on the next video. Mm-hmm.